26 HFD firefighters suspended after falsely pronouncing a 14-year-old boy dead who has special needs during a call in January to his home. We talked to that teen's grandmother who says the fire chief owes her an apology. Plus, you may know her from Tyler Perry movies and TV shows. The very funny Coco Brown talks to us about her upcoming shows in Houston. The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to the Factor Uncensored on this Tuesday night. It's an enraging story you saw right here on Fox yesterday. A grandmother who called 911 to help her grandson a teenager with special needs. She says paramedics were cold and not empathetic at all, and not empathetic at all, and said the boy was dead. He wasn't. He was far from dead. Now that grandmother says a slap on the wrist suspension isn't enough for the firefighters who treated her really bad. And joining us now here on the Factor on Susan is very alive, Jacob Jefferson and his grandmother, Stacy Williams. Stacy, that's just a nightmare what you guys went through. For the viewers who are not familiar with your story quite yet, what happened? On January 26th, I called 911 because my grandson had urinated all day and he gets water through a feeding tube. So I called them just to come out thinking maybe they could give him a catheter. Um, also, his lips were white, his nails were kind of, you know, the color wasn't coming back. But he has a low body temperature, low heart rate, just because of the shaky baby syndrome and everything he deals with. Two paramedics showed up, the one paramedic touched his wrist and he was like, oh yeah, ma'am, he's gone. Meaning oh, he is no longer alive. <laughs> yes, so I said, what? He was like, oh yeah, ma'am, he's gone. There's no pulse, he's gone. So I'm like, so what are we doing? You, you gotta do something, right? Ma'am, what do you want us to do? The same way I'm talking to you is the way they were talking to me. There was no empathy, there was no rush, no 911, that's the number that I dialed, nothing. Just cold and ready to get the job over with and out your door. The guy that put the things on his chest and told me, oh yeah, see ma'am, there's no heart rate. He stood in the door of my hotel bedroom with his hand on his hip and said, ma'am, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to take an act of God. Wow. Wow. So what are you saying at this point when these Houston firefighters are telling you uh, that your, your kid is, your grandson is no longer alive? And no, what kind of say, fear? Did you have any fear that none. that may be right? None whatsoever, because I had just did his bio regimen. I just gave him his medicine. I did his nightly things that we do. I called you for one purpose. So his, what he said to me and his tone didn't match. You couldn't be telling me that my kid is dead by saying, oh yeah, man, he's gone. So I was just like, Come on, I know y'all gonna do something. I, I didn't know, I didn't know what to think, what to say. I wasn't excited, I wasn't like hysterical, none of those things because you tell me my baby is deceased like you're talking about, man, you dropped your phone on the floor. Nothing. Just cold? Cold. Hey. Now, another paramedic slash uh, Houston firefighter showed up and then the paramedics and firefighters. So when they showed up, what happened when the third showed up? Um, one, once those two guys, one of the guys laid my baby on the floor, no clothes, vomit coming out of his nose, still no CPR. By the time the other paramedic showed up... Real quick, there were signs of life. You said he... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, he... So how does he throw up if he's deceased? So when they walked in the door, I'm talking to the shorter guy. I think he may have been like a supervisor. I don't know who he was, but he was asking me questions. But I could see the, I'm gonna say he's Asian. He came in, he went straight to Jacob, and I saw him working. The other two guys, the big guy never got on the floor and did anything. Mm -hmm. So I saw him doing the CPR after a while. That's when they loaded us up. We got in the paramedics, still didn't move for another five to seven minutes. 
we sat in the parking lot of the hotel and you could hear them saying, has anybody talked to the supervisor? You talked to the supervisor? The guy picked up the phone in the paramedics and I'm like, what are we doing? Why are we moving? He said, ma'am, we have to get permission from a supervisor before we can move this vehicle. That's not true. We've been in the back of the paramedics many times and I've never known them to have to make a phone call or get permission to take us to the hospital. What do you think it was about these two EMTs or paramedics that they didn't want to do any work? They're just lazy asses. I don't know if they were having a rough night. It was after midnight and I called them. I don't know what the deal was, but my child was laying on the bed. You could see his wheelchair. You could see all of our other medical equipment because he is special needs. Did you just not want to touch him? I, in my report, in my um, complaint, I said, why did my black disabled son, why was his life not valuable? Mm -hmm. Why did it not mean anything? Why did you pick him? That's what I want to know. Why? And so we're hearing from the Houston Fire Department that they were eventually suspended for a few days, no specificity on their punishment and what they received other than they were suspended for a few days. Is that enough for you? No, sir. Jacob has been suspended for the rest of his life. We have brain damage on top of brain damage we already had. He's been fighting for life his entire life. We go through shaking baby syndrome. Then we call the people that we trust to help us. And you do him like that? You won't even try to help him? So suspension, and I've been calling, I've been asking for follow-up. I keep being told, watch the mail, we're gonna send you a letter, we're gonna do this. The letter that I saw said the investigation has been closed since May 26th. Your supervisor called me in June and told me that the investigation was still open. It's not adding up. None of the dates are adding up. None of the stories I'm getting is adding up. And who's gonna come and apologize to me and Jason? I think that the fire chief, the fire chief should come and apologize for the way his men handle this case. And he, the fire he, chief. He, I don't even know who that is. Pena, Sam Pena needs to do it to you in person. I have not met him. I have not heard anything from him. Uh, no one came to the hospital. No one has been here to my home to check on us. The extensive medical thing, I mean, we have new medical beds, everything for Jacob. Who's concerned about what we go through from day to day? They may have gotten off for a couple of days. Was it paid leave? I don't know. Those are all questions we all have. But we want to be thankful to God that he is here with you today. Absolutely. And I do want to say, guys, I love y'all. I forgive y'all. But consequences have to be paid for your actions. And from my experience, I know most Houston firefighters are hard workers, but these two, we have a problem, Houston. We reached out to the fire chief's office for a statement and asked if they had any plans to meet with Stacy and her grandson, and we're still waiting on a response. And once we get that response, we will have it here for you on The Factor. Up next, we talk to Crime Stoppers about the backlog of criminal cases. We'll be back after this.